Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and buy it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today we are discussing the Omega DeVille Hour Vision in full red gold annual calendar, 41 millimeters across the wrist. By the way, that is Omega's terminology, red gold, not pink, not rose. And while this model launched in 2009, it suffers none of the ungainly size or proportion of most complications from that era. At 41 millimeters in diameter, this is an easy watch to wear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Now it is 14.1 millimeters thick, but with a generously domed case flank that will allow it to slide underneath the dress cuff. And from lug to lug, it is a very friendly 49.4 millimeters. You'll even appreciate the fact that there is a bit of a cambered or arced shape to the case, so it wraps around your wrist, falling off towards the edge rather than flaring out stridently. If you're borderline to wear this watch, it's going to look just fine. 14 centimeter circumference wrists buy with confidence. Now, it's rare to see one of these in colored gold, as they're traditionally steel watches. Most of the Hour Visions and most of the Hour Vision annual calendars were executed in steel. The Hour Vision launched in 2007 as the debut platform for the coaxial caliper 8500, the first clean sheet coaxial design that Omega attempted. And in 2009, we got the annual calendar system that requires only one adjustment per year between February and March. But to see it on a full red gold bracelet with a red gold case is truly something breathtaking. 20 millimeters is the spacing between the lugs, so the watch is easy to accessorize with a strap if you want to, but it is 100 meters water resistant, and this bracelet is going to be your first option whether you want to wear it high and dry or wet and wild. First, it's beautifully made, and this is not a bracelet design you'll see often. It's not a Speedmaster bracelet, it's not a Seamaster bracelet. Nine links, differential size, differential finish, and you can see it even has the kind of hand-finished attention to detail that we associate with the likes of Patek and Audemars Piguet. Look at that hairline bevel that runs along the shoulders of the links, perfectly aligned from link to link. And look at the delicacy of the finish on the hoods. Look at the flying V-shape of the primary links and the handsome satin finish of the flanks. This is a bracelet, I kid you not, that feels just as formidable in the wrist as the bracelet on the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Pounder. In fact, in the hand, eyes closed, this could be the pounder. It has that much substance to match its style. Big gaps on the underside, ergonomics not looked askance. This will not pinch skin, pull hair, or trap wrist heat on a hot day. Sizable links with screws, you can see that there is an intermediate sized link on both sides for fine sizing, and the clasp itself is a substantial twin trigger double folder. One detail that I happen to adore is that Omega used an applique white gold Omega logo insert on top of the clasp body. And of course, this being twin trigger, it's going to stay shut unless you depress both of the triggers. I have a feeling that this particular bracelet, given the standards of assembly and finish, was probably built by the old company called Lascor in Sesto Calendi, Italy. Uh, the Sesto Calendi specialist in clasps and gold bracelets used to be Omega's supplier before being bought by Omega, or Swatch Group, I should say, and I suspect this still hails from their works. Now, the timepiece was a trendsetter back in 2007. The original Hour Vision combined a complex case construction with the first notion of sapphire as a case component. Now, today you'll see it in everything from Hublot to Richard Mille to Grubel Forcey, but the original notion to create a sapphire case, at least in part, largely dawned in the mainstream thanks to the Hour Vision, but it's not just this cambered and immaculately finished window-like sapphire. It's also the fact that the case itself is pretty complex. Note that there's a little inward inflection of the satin finished flanks. It's almost like there's a concave profile to the lug, like something you would find on a Grubel Forsey. They have that inward inflected curved lug profile. There's a, a bevel that flares as it approaches the mid case and it actually flares to seamlessly become the domed profile of the bezel. There's also a squared off sharp end to give a little bit of strength and a thrusting downward cant to the lugs. You can see that the crown is Omega with peripheral knurling, a domed cap and a relieved Omega logo. And you'll also appreciate the fact that there is a dramatic junction between the lug and the bezel itself. It's almost like you're looking at the setting of a gem, wherein the lugs are the setting and the gem is the bezel and the dial. And the dial is a gem. As you can see, it's a satin finished metallic 
without a sunburst grain, so it doesn't have that explosive radial grain of a sunburst, it's a soft frosted look that glows rather than explodes. You have a rhodium coated hour track outboard that has shades of art deco and you can see both sides of it converge on the day and, or I should say the month and the date at three o'clock. Applique Omega logo, rose gold hands at center and a blue needle style seconds hand. Since this is an annual calendar, it's able to cope with the regular length months. You need to adjust it only once annually during the jump from February to March. So if you have an irregular length month like April, for example, not only does this thing have an instantaneous midnight jump a la Rolex, but it's able to make the correct jump to May 1st from April 30th. There's also a quick set system that I will demonstrate. You see how it has hacking or stop seconds? Well, it also has a quick set so you can rapidly cycle the date and the month and you can do that by turning the crown in opposite directions. Turn it all over. What do you have? You have a free sprung balance on a full balance bridge crafted of 18 karat rose gold. Now the movement is 8611. 8601 would be the standard, let's give ourselves a bit more light, would be the standard annual calendar caliber based on the 8500. 8611 features the 18 karat rose gold solid rotor and 18 karat rose gold solid bridge. Free sprung with a full balance bridge for shock resistance. SI14 hairspring for anti-magnetism. All of this 100 meters water resistant. It is a sports watch. 60 hour power reserve twin mainspring barrels for a very even torque release throughout the full power reserve. It beats away at 25,200 vibrations per hour. It is both a coaxial with tri-level tangential contact escapement and it is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. This is a timepiece that puts it all together. Handsome and extraordinary. It matches style with substance. Engineering, accomplished. Style, impressive. Size, wearable. Rarity, assured. This is not your everyday Omega. Not another Speedmaster, not another Seamaster, and thank goodness for that. This is the DeVille Hour Vision annual calendar. See it on the watch box.